Hello everybody. So as the title says, this is going to be a video on how I care for my trapdoor spiders. And uh, these two specimens have previously not been featured in any of my videos, so this will be their big debut. <laughs> but anyways, this care video should be uh, applicable to all trapdoor species. But if you guys want to be specific, this is how I care for my Cyclocosmia terreus, the ravine trapdoor spider. Alright, to start, let's talk about this enclosure. One of the most important parts of caring for a trapdoor spider is making sure you pick the correct enclosure. And uh, the enclosure is very important because of the animal's behavior itself. So, to get a better understanding, I'll explain what trapdoors do, um, if you don't know. But so, what trapdoors do is they dig deep burrows into the ground, and they cover their the entrances with a lid made of dirt or whatever they're burrowing into and silk, and the silk holds the lid together. So when a prey item walks past their burrow. They have uh, silk lines that they use to detect their prey outside of the burrow. And when a prey item walks on these lines, they sense it through their feet. And as the prey item walks by and the spider senses it, it rushes out of its burrow, grabs the prey, and shoots back down into its hole. And the lid follows and closes behind it. It's truly amazing to watch. And if you've ever seen them, eat before you know what I mean so with all that being said um, it's very important to pick an enclosure that allows a lot of room for digging because trapdoors well the trapdoors how they catch their prey they need it to survive like you can't give them a hide they need to burrow so you need to pick an enclosure that allows for a good room of digging and as you can see, these uh, critter keepers that I bought at Petco, there's currently about, um, I'd say about four inches of substrate. And for the size that these guys are at right now, they're about quarter of an inch, a bit bigger. That is perfectly fine for them. And I also chose to uh, show you guys a container of fruit flies because this would also be a good enclosure because there's a lot of vertical space and a lot of room to put dirt in there for them to dig. So that is why an enclosure is so important because they can't be kept on shallow substrate because they need to burrow. It's how they hunt and it's necessary for them to survive. So let's talk about substrate. Alright guys, so I've taken the lids off so you guys can see. <sighs> Sorry about that. But anyways, both of these trapdoors are being kept on a combination of cocoa fiber and sand. And this is because the uh, sand gives it a nice consistency and it makes it a lot easier for the trapdoors to make their burrows. And the uh, cocoa fiber is good for moisture retention, or at least I've found it that it retains moisture fairly well but moisture is another very important thing for trapdoors because all of them need to be kept fairly moist or at least somewhat moist because even if your trapdoor is found in a deserty environment they're in their burrows and at when you dig you get moisture so it is a lot more moist down in their burrows than it may be at the surface so Moisture is very important with trapdoors, and like I said with uh, the enclosure, you need to give the trapdoors room to dig, so a nice deep layer of substrate is needed. And as I said, there's about, I'd say, four inches of sub in both of these containers, and the spiders themselves are about quarter of an inch in lifespan, maybe a bit bigger, so that is good for them. So anyways guys, let's talk about prey.
All right, guys, so when it comes time to feed your trapdoor, it really depends on the size of your trapdoor. And since I got these guys as these little eighth of an inch slings, they are not very big still. As I've said, they're just about above a quarter inch in leg span. So I choose to feed them these uh, high dye fruit flies and uh, that's been doing them well. Kelly Swift was the person I bought them from at Swift's Inverts. You guys should check him out. Great seller, knows what he's doing. I did try to record an unboxing video for these guys, but I messed that up. So I didn't end up posting it or anything. But he also included these little pinhead, like week old crickets with the purchase. And I fed them. They lasted about a week. And they ate them. So, yeah. Like I said, it depends on the size of your trapdoor. These guys get about two inches in leg span. So I'll be feeding them about medium to regular size crickets when they're all grown up and they're adults. And some of the larger species like the uh, Madagascar trapdoor spiders that have recently been popping up in the hobby. They grow to about to be about four inches. And the African reds, which get sizable too at three inches in leg span, they can be fed large crickets and I think that they take them down easy. So yeah, that's about it when in terms of food. Um water. So water's pretty simple for these guys as you don't really have to do anything besides water the substrate really. Um, that's another reason they need it moist is because they're going to be in their burrows so you can't give them a water dish because they're not going to come out to drink. And they get most of their uh, moisture from their food as well as the water in the substrate like I've just said. So as you've just seen the two burrows and you're looking at one of them right now, um, it brings me to a big point and one of the real cons about keeping trapdoor spiders and I think everyone really needs to understand this before they go out and buy trapdoors is that these guys aren't even pet holes. It's like keeping a container of cricket eating dirt. <laughs> but yeah, you're never going to see these guys out in the open unless you have a male that is matured and is looking for a mate, which most of the trapdoors in the hobby are mainly all adult females because collectors aren't going to be looking around for some wandering male. They're going to be looking for these big giant holes that are like obvious trapdoor. But anyways, males are very rare in the hobby, so you're hardly ever going to see your trapdoor unless you get lucky and it builds its burrow near the side of the container. So yeah, that's something people need to understand, and I thought I'd mention it. But for the moments you do get to see your trapdoor eaten explode out of its hole to grab a fruit fly passing by it makes it so worth it in my opinion because it's one of the real wonders of nature and it's truly fascinating to watch at the end of this video I'll share a clip a very short clip of uh, one of the only times I've caught my trapdoors eating on camera and anyways one way to tell if your uh, trapdoor is alive or not, and not by digging it up, is trying to, first of all, lifting up the burrow and shining a light down. They hate the light. <laughs> so if you want to see your trapdoor, you can do that, but do not do it too frequently because it does stress them out. And if your trapdoor is at the surface and you want to see if it's alive, and you try to open the burrow, 
it will like push down on itself and it won't open up. And that is basically the trap door gripping on to the lid of its burrow with its feet and holding it shut. So that's one way you can tell. And give me a second guys and I'm gonna get a tool. And I'm gonna see if I can open up these burrows and show you the spiders. All right guys, this is gonna be shaky because I'm recording with my iPhone, but here we go. And there's one of them. Really cool guys. Uh, Trapdoor's legs are really stubby. Why, I don't really know, but it's something that I noticed about them. And personally, I think it's kind of cute when you see them. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's go check on the other one. Alright, guys, and here's the second one. Let's see if we can drop by and say hello. <laughs> Well, there's a prime example of what I was saying. Right now, this trap door is currently holding his door shut, so we can't get in there. He's saying, go away, I'm not home. <laughs> but anyways, that's one of the ways you can tell if your trap door is alive. And the other way is obviously, like I said, staring down in its hole and see if you can see it. <laughs> Alright guys, I actually uh, have a couple pictures, or one picture, from the last time I rehoused these guys. And the clip of one of the meetings, so I'll show you guys that and I'll conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, slow and fast motion clips and watching them eat in person is so cool to watch but anyways guys let's conclude the video with some pros and cons of keeping the species so let's start with the pros if you buy a trapdoor you are getting an animal that is there's nothing like them in the world really and it is something that is truly unique for any collection and when you watch the meat in person it is so fascinating to watch I know I've reiterated it about a thousand times now but it truly is very unique and something different and very cool to watch the con is is that you're never gonna see them because they are trapdoors and that's basically the trade-off but in my opinion if you ask me watching them eat makes it worth not really seeing them all that often and another pro is for when you do see them out in the open or you have to rehouse them is that this species in particular or anyone from the uh, Cyclocosmia genus those trapdoors have the uh, hourglass abdomens that look like ancient relics and that is so cool when you look at it and they actually use that as a plug to their burrow to prevent uh, predators to get to them so it's a little fun fact for you guys and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm sorry it was a bit repetitive sometimes but Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.